Hello guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to undervolt your Intel 13th gen CPU. I am on a 13700K. This will work with both, both 13900K and 13600K. First things first, you want to either get CPU ID HW monitor or you can get HW info. I'll be using HW info and HW monitor today. Oops, I did not want to open that one. The other thing that you would want to install is Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. I'll be using both. I'll be using Extreme Tuning Utility to figure out what voltages I can use. Then I'm going to go into BIOS and show you how you want to set up your BIOS. So first, on my computer, So first things first, have your HW monitor right here. You'll be watching your temperatures and your vid voltages. Open Cinebench. Bring HW monitor up. Hey, really? Well, scratch that one. Can't see anything. That's stupid. Okay, let's try this again. W monitor right here, check your vids, and check your temperatures, start it. As you can see, it's already at 1.375 on the vid, and it's already at like 93 Celsius, which is okay, but I was able to bring it down to like 82 while undervolting. I'm also on a Kraken X. What is it again? It's a crack in X53 240mm radiator AIO. So once Cinebench is done loading, 26547, we can do a lot better than that. So we maxed at 1386. We're going to pull up Intel XTU, set our core voltage. Let's go. 1386 will go. 1330, that's a 50 decrease of millivolts. Apply that. Check everything. Everything looks good. Let's see if it applied it. Looks like it didn't. This is the one thing I, I experienced with um, extreme tuning utility on my platform. It would sometimes not apply these settings, which is really annoying. I think it's because they need to apply a new BIOS update to my computer. Okay, we'll do this again. Should drop it. It's just doing undefined. I don't know why. So now we'll just do core voltage up offset. We'll do minus 100. Apply. Now we'll go to adaptive and then apply. Okay, pull up your HW monitor. You'll see the value is now 1.26 volts. It'll still spike up to over here. Now let's hit start again. As you can see, it's only hitting 1.297 on the cores. We're now at 83 Celsius. I'm still pulling a whole bunch of watts, but that's just because of my motherboard wanting to go PL2 basically no matter what. You can change that in your settings, but also depending on what motherboard you have, it will be different from mine. Also, my scores are going to be a lot lower than normal because I am recording this video as well. See, 27846, I will run this test and record it with my phone so you guys can see what it looks like when I'm not recording anything. So, that worked. We're going to go down... 25, apply it, check if it applied, yes it did, and we run her again, So 
so we'll have to go into the BIOS and start tweaking it by core voltages. We're going to do adaptive in the BIOS. 1.3, make sure you keep notes of this. So you're going to write down 1.33 volts minus 0.125 volts. So now we're going to be going into the BIOS and I will be right back with my phone recording. Enter your setup. You're going to scroll down to vCore. Let's see if the camera's getting all right. Yep. vCore adaptive. We're going to go 1.300. Wait, no. It was 1.330. Oh, yeah. We don't want to do 133 volts. My PC would explode. There we go. 133. And now we're going to do minus 1, 2, 3. Five. On your BIOS, you might need to put the decimal in between the 1 and the 2. This BIOS, you don't have to. And that's about it. Well As you can see, we're back into Windows. You can see that the BIOS has accepted the voltage and it's down to 1.234. We will go into Cinebench. Also with Adaptive, your bids will spike up occasionally just to make sure your computer is stable. We're going to start. I, almost, I did it again. Yep, I did it again. Okay, we're stopping it. We're pushing start. Now I can see all the voltages and stuff. See how, it's, see how this core spiked up to 1.3? That's because we're in adaptive. But look at the temps. 83C. Beautiful. It's better than the 101C you get sometimes when you're running stock. You're going to have to undervolt with these CPUs. I don't know how the 13900K is, but I bet on a 240mm radiator, it really overheats on stock settings. See, we already gained 1,000 points versus our 2775 in our previous runs. So I'm going to go back into the BIOS. I'm going to go 0.25 lower again, and we're going to see how it goes. I'll be showing you how I did it. Turn my phone as well. OK, guys, so the minus 1.5 uh, undervolt worked perfectly. My room is a little bit hotter now because I live in Florida, and it is pretty warm outside today. So. Temperatures will be up at least 5 Celsius for the remaining of the video, so just keep that in mind. So, I, have, I was playing around with my settings for a while, so I was able to, so to tune your CPU to get more clock speeds out of it, you go CPU multiplier. On my BIOS, I can see which cores are faster and slower, so I just increased each one by 100 megahertz. Okay, for a second I thought I messed up somewhere. I changed my core voltages, I was able to continue to tune, I got it down to 1.29 minus 125 offset voltage. Your CPU will be different, you just have to tinker around until you just find the perfect undervolt for your system, remember that. You can try to copy my settings, either it'll work, or it'll crash, or you might be able to do even better. You might be able to go down to 1.25 and go minus 150, who knows. So just take these settings with a grain of salt. But also I was able to go into the um, efficiency cores and I'm able to go, I think it was, I think I was able to get a solid 4.4 gigahertz out of them as well. So once you do all that, always make sure your XMP is enabled. You just go save, cha save changes and reset. It's really easy and we'll Here's the updated video. So, on my own, I did some of my own little testing and stuff. Intel XTU is working half the time, so that's good. So I'm able to run 1.275 core voltage minus 1.75 voltage. I'm still doing some experimentation, like dropping this all the way down to 1.1.8 and then putting this to plus 1. But I still need to do some more testing because sometimes the CPU tends to get really hot. But anyways, my core clock's now 
are five four through all the cores and four point three gigahertz on the e cores. Um, on previous settings, I can get four point four gigahertz out of the e cores and five point five gigahertz on two cores on the p cores. So it's just a lot of experimentation and stuff. But let's go ahead and start this seven inch run. As you can see, cores are boosting to 5.4 gigahertz. Temperatures are withstandable. It's still a little bit hot, but it's a lot better than the normal stock settings on your BIOSes because they just zoom. As you can see, the voltages are much lower. 1.29, I think I could probably get 1.27 on them with some more fine tuning, but also I'm going to add this to the video. If you want, I could probably, one second, I'm going to save this, okay, profiles, um, I can go ahead and do it, show values, and then you apply it, so now I'm on default settings. If you want to drop your wattages while you're doing like render runs, you take your turbo boost power max. You go, let's say you only want to run the CPU at like 130 watts, you do that. Oop, I didn't do this one as well. Drop it to 130.625 watts. Apply. Go out. So now, if we watch our package in for wattage powers, it should stay below 200 watts. See? 130 watts. And we're still getting up to 4 gigahertz and 3.3 gigahertz. It just also depends, as you can see. 54C. We got 29,000 on our previous run, so you can see how many points we lost by dropping the wattage. This will be good for people who pay a lot for electricity. And you do a lot of content creation, you could probably lose about 20 seconds on your renderings and stuff, and you just drop your wattage a bunch, and it's just worth it. But 22, only lost 7,000 points, and you could probably t fine tune it as well. And I, and that's about it. Um, I'll be doing a game test as well, so you can see the speeds and how many watts it pulls, and the temperatures under gaming conditions. Okay, so here we are in a game, under gaming conditions. Um, with my old system, I had a 5600X, and I was sitting around 56 Celsius playing this game, and I was only getting around, like, 90 FPS around here, but this processor gave me an extra 54 frames per second, which is just wow. Also, I'm on an RTX 3070 Founders Edition, and it looks like I need to, like, this thing, this game really pests your computer. Like, it's annoying, but I tell you what, it's so much smoother. Like, if, for you other Tarkov players out there, like, when I play Lighthouse, you can, oh my! Do I still got it? Yeah, I still got it. I haven't played this game in a couple days. Oh. Stop breathing so hard. As a friend. Oh my gosh! What? What in the world? That's a rip, but you got to see me play good, and then you got to see why I'm still washed at this game. But anyways, thank you for watching this video on how to undervolt 13th gen CPUs. Like, I was getting 46C while gaming, that's just incredible. And then all those other people saying, oh man, this thing's gonna run super extremely hot. If you're gaming, you're fine. Even if you're doing 
productivity stuff. You just undervolt the thing, and it's only getting 82C. The 7950X, it gets 95C all the time. Just make sure you undervolt your CPU, and you should be fine. See ya.